In this presentation, you're going to learn about the basics of photography composition and the harmony of art composition and design. In this presentation, you're going to be introduced to some of the basic elements of composition, including the importance of mood and atmosphere, what makes a technically strong photograph, strategies to improve your composition, and basic composition strategies. Photography is an incredibly accessible art form. Do you know anyone who doesn't have a camera these days? Most people do, but unfortunately, most people don't have an awareness of what makes an image stand out amongst others. Think about what makes images effective. Perhaps it's a unique angle or a subject out of place. Lines, shapes, colors, and even textures can be used to make an image really stand out, or a spot of color against white. Mood is the overall feel of a picture created by perspective, color, focus, which includes isolating a subject against a background and your distance from the object. Weather and light also impact your mood, such as sunrise or sunset and misty and rainy days. Consider the way light impacts your photography. Light that is available to the eye is known as simply available light. Available lighting can give a sense of shape and depth without high contrast and flattening of the subject. Available light can come from many sources, such as sunlight, moonlight, artificial light sources, floodlights, street lights, even household lamps. Strobes and flashes work against creating effective images because of the flattening effect they have on the subject. For this class, avoid using direct flash. Kelvin represents the temperature of light directly correlated with the color of light. One Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius. To simplify how this applies to photography, think of it in terms of the temperature of your light source. When the sun is at sunrise or sunset, this appears as 2000 approximately on the Kelvin scale. A tungsten light bulb is 3200 Kelvin. A white fluorescent light is 4000 Kelvin. And 5200 Kelvin is average sunlight, whereas 5900 Kelvin is direct flash or strobe. It is important to have as close a true white as possible in your photographs. To adjust for light temperature, your cameras have a white balance setting. It's recommended that for the first few weeks of class, use auto white balance. Auto white balance only operates accurately in the range of 2600 to 5900 Kelvin. Characteristics of a good photo include a combination of design elements, which include shape, line, pattern, texture, spatial proximity, and perspective. Shapes tend to be noticed first before texture and pattern. Easiest and most recognizable are shapes, which help create mood and character for pictures. Search for the unconventional or surprise shape in objects. Lighting is a common means for creating shape in photographs. It can be created through silhouettes, backlighting, or by shadows. When you're photographing, look for unique shapes. Explore tilt and angle to allow shapes to be a dominant part of the composition. Lines create shape, pattern, depth, perspective. Lines lead the eye around the composition, including the focal point or subject, or to create abstract designs. Types of line include, but aren't limited to, straight, curved, diagonal, scattered, receding, directional, geometric, organic, and even S-curves. Diagonal lines draw the viewer around the picture plane and can be used for emphasis. They also add a lot of energy to your photographs. Curved lines can create an organic feel to the composition and can also draw the viewer through the composition. Curved lines can also create an S-curve that is visually appealing as it adds repetition and rhythm to the composition. Line can be used to influence perspective. It can flatten or increase depth in a composition. Strong pattern lines can flatten space and create unique designs. Pattern is an orderly combination of shape, line, or color. Pattern can help echo the character of a photo and catch attention, especially with random patterns, slight variations, multiple patterns, and even patterns in common places that are often overlooked.
Texture adds realism through a perceived tactile sense in a photograph. Sharp or direct light, which is also known as hard light, highlights texture. Side lighting also highlights texture, depending on the intensity. Open shade can reduce the amount of visual texture. Most portraits taken out in the environment use open shade to decrease texture on skin, whereas direct lighting can increase texture on skin, such as wrinkles. Two-dimensional pictures distort depth, relative size, and distances. With this in mind, explore filling the frame with only what you want your photograph to contain. Do this while you're making your composition, while you're taking your photograph. Make every part of the image count, especially the corners. Make sure not to include distractions like rear view mirrors, fingers in front of the lens, or objects that detract from the focal point. Do not photograph from your car. Get out of your car when you're shooting and please move your camera toward the subject instead of zooming, if at all possible, to try to achieve a more effective composition. Perspective refers to your relationship to your subject matter. It's important to explore different perspectives, such as looking up at a subject. Change your perspective by getting low to the ground. This is commonly known as worm's eye view. Aerial perspective minimizes subjects, especially if you're using a wide angle lens, and this can make objects seem small. This is commonly known as bird's eye view. In this class, you're going to learn about using the rule of thirds. This is a compositional strategy that helps you place your focal point or subject matter strategically along the grid intersections to have a stronger center of interest. You'll also learn to take photos at different angles with different compositions and to incorporate the rule of thirds by placing the focal point along the grid intersections. We'll discuss rule of thirds more in the assignment video for this week. Simplicity is another way to improve composition that works really well with the rule of thirds. With this technique, you have one strong center of interest. Place your focal point along the intersection of the grid lines or in one of the quadrants. You'll have to practice this technique to learn to apply it. The foreground or background should be simple or complementary to the center of interest. This is oftentimes referred to as negative space. Negative space is just as important as the focal point, as it effectively works for emphasis on your focal point or subject matter. To conclude this presentation, we're gonna look at the importance of balance. Photographs are balanced by the organization of visual elements, color and light. The primary types of balance include symmetrical and asymmetrical. Symmetrical balance is achieved when visual elements are equal on both sides, as if the image could be folded in half. When trying to incorporate symmetrical balance in the natural world, the visual elements are rarely in true perfect symmetry. So approximate symmetry is still predominantly symmetrical and accepted as visually symmetrical. Asymmetry is when items are not equally weighted visually on both sides. Asymmetry is an important type of balance that can be used with the rule of thirds to organize your composition.